Math 31, let's take a look at parallel and perpendicular lines again. We talked about these concepts back in Chapter 2, but we've picked up function notation since then, and we've been talking about linear functions specifically in, in Chapter 4, so we want to revisit these ideas. So if you remember, two distinct non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slopes. So graphically, parallel lines don't touch, right? Because if you have the same slope, your rise over run is the same. And, and you stay increasing or potentially decreasing at the same rate. So you'll never intersect. On the flip of that, perpendicular lines, they meet at right angles. So these two lines are perpendicular because this angle here, this intersection angle, is 90 degrees. So two lines, neither of which are vertical, are perpendicular if and only if their slopes have a product of negative 1. Thus, the slopes of perpendicular lines, neither of which are vertical, are negative reciprocals. So you can think about the slopes of vertical lines in terms of their product. If you multiply their slopes, the product of their slopes would be negative 1. Or I think the more common phrase that's used is their slopes are negative reciprocals of one another. So parallel lines, same slopes, perpendicular lines, negative reciprocals of each other. So with that, I'm gonna to scoot to the page up and we're gonna practice finding the equation of a line parallel or perpendicular to a given line. So let's take a look at what we're given and what we're being asked to find. So given the function h of x, which is equal to two x minus four, write an equation for the line passing through one negative five that is parallel to h of x, and then we'll try one that is perpendicular to h of x. So I'm gonna put a little separation squiggles here because I'm gonna do this problem twice, one for parallel lines, one for perpendicular. Okay, so here's the point that I wanna pass through. And one negative five is not on my original graph. If you were to plug one in here, two times one is two, two minus four is negative two. So this, this line would have the ordered pair one negative two, and I'm asked to go through one negative five. All right, I'm gonna erase this. I don't actually need this point. But let's go ahead and take a look at the slope for this function. So the slope here is two. Now that means the slope for any parallel line will be two. And maybe you've seen this symbol before, this subscript with the two lines that don't touch. That's the symbol for parallel. It also implies to me the slope of any line perpendicular, and that's the subscript for perpendicular lines. It would be the negative reciprocal of two. Well, this is the fraction two over one, so its reciprocal would be one over two. So all parallel lines will have the same slopes. All perpendicular lines will have slopes that are negative reciprocals to my original slope. Now I'm gonna pass through the point one negative five on each of these. Okay, so you have a couple of options. You could try and work this through the slope intercept form of a line. I personally like the point slope form, so I'm gonna use that. If you remember point slope, it is y minus y sub one equaling m times x minus x sub one. All right, this was the point slope form. And the reason, I like it for many reasons, but I was given a point and I was given a slope, so I'm gonna work it. So here we go, y minus negative five would be equal to two times x minus one. So I would have y plus five would be equal to two x minus two. So ultimately my answer is y is equal to two x minus seven. And let me just check, the slope is two, that's great. Does it pass through one negative five? Well, if I plug one in, two times one is two, two minus seven is negative five, so this, this is it, right? This line is parallel to my given line and it passes through one negative five. Great. Now I'm gonna use the point slope form here. Well, let's see what we get. So this is going to ultimately be y plus five. This time it'll be negative one half times x minus one. So we're gonna have y plus five equaling negative one half x plus one half. All right. When I subtract five over, this would be y equaling negative one half x. All right, so if I wanna attack this, I know we love fractions, but one half minus five, right? If I did off to the side here, one half minus five, I know that's negative four and a half. And I could use my calculator for this, but I'm trying to use my head. Um, if I wanna rewrite this as a fraction, that would be negative nine halves. So minus nine halves, okay? 
Now, if I look, this, these slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. All right, let's see if one negative five works out. If I plug one in for x, negative one half times one is negative one half. Negative one half minus nine halves is negative 10 halves, and negative 10 halves is equivalent to negative five. So both of these are working out. All right, so with that, we're gonna try one more example, and we're gonna finish up this section. I'll see you in a few, bye.